Hey everybody, I'm just making a quick walk with my doggies, but there's a few discoveries that I wanted to share with you. This is the actual rubbish cove right over here, and there's just a ton of bottles and motion that has happened. So I'm not even gonna have to dig. I'm pretty sure I can see an intact bottle right over here, guys. You can see there's a piece of like willow pattern right over there. Oh my God, there's more than one. You've gotta be kidding me, guys. Oh, this one's broken. Oh my goodness, there's just so much going on here. Look at this over here, the square bottle. Then look at this, this is good enough to bring home. Oh, what does it say? What does it say? Oh, the King Bottling Company. It says the King Bottling Company, which is in Glace Bay, Nova Scotia. So this is a bottle I have a few times, but it's coming home with us. This is like the spring thaw at its maximum. Right over here, guys, let's get ready. Here it is, let's take it out together. I hope it's intact. Oh my God, it's intact. Oh my gosh, it's intact. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's got a few chips right on the top, guys, but it is intact. It's got a huge kick up. I can see it. You can see the kick up from here. This thing is filled with sediment. Oh my gosh. Guys, I want to get right back in here before I keep looking. Now look at this one right over here. This here is the medicine bottle. You can see it right over here. This is like a patient medicine bottle. Look at this bottle. Why did it have to be broken? Okay, look at the bottom of this one. Oh, look at this pond tail marking over here. So this bottle right over here was actually hand blown and this one's from the 1800s and it's broken. But you can just see there's so much that's about to come out. Oh my gosh, is this a coin? No, it's not a coin. This is just crazy. I'll bet underneath this piece right over here, there's gonna be a whole bunch as well. Let's see what else I can do. I don't have any of my tools with me. And then look, as I go down over here, guys, you can just see there is so much glass. Here we go. This is the piece of the cup that I thought I saw. I thought I saw something with a little bit of red on it, but it was like a ceramic. So I don't see that. You stay there, doggy. Okay. I'm trying to do this. I got the doggies with me. I didn't expect to be on a bottle hunt right now. But lo and behold, here we are. And we're on a bottle hunt. Uh, look at this one over here, guys. It's like a massive handle. You can see all this coal and it's just sitting out. It kind of eroded out of the shoreline. You can see there's like a thousand pound boulder there. So I better be careful. It's going to erode out. This side over here, I always found was a little bit more modern. However, look at this here. This is the lip from our mason jar that we find quite frequently. I'm going to go walk up on this side over here and then we're going to collect our bottles and we're going to see if we can wash them off and get a little bit more information about them. Oh, look at this right over here, guys. It's an old piece of shoe leather from a woman. Square bottle, ouch. Square bottle that's a little bit sharp, you can see. Look at this pattern right over here. This is a really cool piece of leather, like a little shoe tongue, I'd have to imagine, from a piece of leather. It's really old, actually, I can feel it. Okay, guys, let's keep this going here. Oh, my goodness. Look at this pattern right over here, everybody. I'm pretty sure I found this pattern in manganese glass a couple of months ago. And here's an original bottle, and it's sitting right here waiting to erode into the ocean. Here's that red that I saw. Here it is, guys. It looks like it's a raspberry from a vase. That is just aces, guys. Check that out. It's just amazing. Very old brick. Okay. Let's keep it going here, guys. A little difficult. Oh, I see something here. Is it intact? Nah, it's not intact. That's too bad. Okay, the doggies don't like me doing this. You can see, though, like I said, some of the stuff is modern. And some of the stuff is more modern, and then some of it's really, really old. And there's a piece of shoe leather right here. This is just bonkers how much stuff's here. Okay, guys, I'm going to get out. And we're going to go look at what we found. And then check this out, everybody. There's just a random piece of cobalt blue, and it's sitting next to this old concrete slab. I've got my hands filled with these bottles over here. This one actually looks like it's still filled with the content. You can see it's all fizzy. So I gotta put it down. I either gotta put the camera down or the bottles down to pick this one up. No surprise there, I chose the camera because these bottles look awesome. I'm done washing my two and a half bottles out and I've got them over here in the field where there's plenty of space for the doggies to just relax and get into trouble. So we can take a look at them. 
Right off the bat, we can see this one over here is like an 1880s to 1910 patient medicine bottle, what I'd expect to see. There probably would have been a label right over here, advertising and stating what it was. And a lot of times we find these, and it's got the name of the company embossed over here and the city on the other side, but this one's a little bit plainer, so it's more generic. So this is a local bottle. It's the King Bottling Company out in Glace Bay. And what's really great about this bottle over here is you can see it's the motif and it's got a firefighter and he's climbing a ladder. And it's really amazing to think that this is what a firefighter would have been wearing a little bit over a century ago as he went in to go rescue someone, save a life or put out a fire. It's got the little chip on it over here, and it's kind of amazing that I found this bottle once before, and I actually have a shard to it that I had matched to the bottle, and then a few years ago, there was somebody visiting on a cruise ship. He was a firefighter from the United States, and he collected old antique bottles, so I gifted him my bottle, and now I have a second one, which is so great because tourism season is coming up, 2021, and it looks like I'm going to be able to share my shard to where it originated from. And lastly, I've got my big bottle right over here. You know, I haven't even given it a look yet. I just washed it off and then I ran up here so that I could share it with everybody. And it really, really cleaned up. I was afraid that there was gonna be a lot of iron that wasn't gonna get off over here. You can see there's a little bit of iron that's still on. The lip was finished off by hand. We can see it's really inconsistent right over here. It kind of tapers off. And it also has a little bit of excessive molten glass over here. And then when I put it like this, now I can really see how inconsistent it is. You can see that the ridge goes up to down right over here. So this bottle's probably about 140 years old, I'd have to imagine. It might even be a little bit older. It's kind of neat to find all three of these bottles in the same area. But that's kind of just how it works with the gravity in the ground, I find, that all the bottles kind of seem to condense in one place. A few years ago, I went to Inverness Beach, and it was wild because there was this one particular spot where there wasn't any sea glass, but you could see tons upon tons of metal that had just settled right at the bottom where the bedrock was. This actually originated in France and was called a mamelon or a mamelin, but we call it a kick-up in the sea glass world. It's a really good indication for me if I find a bottle that doesn't have the mold markings on it, but it does possess this kick-up that was probably made around 1870 to 1880. Originally, these kick-ups were added to kind of cover the pontail scarring on the bottom of a bottle, and they were also used for structural integrity. They helped make the bottles a little bit more durable. You can actually still find this on the bottom of a champagne bottle in present day time, even though bottles are fully automated, because it does help with the structural integrity. It really means a lot to me to see all the new subscribers, all the positive comments, and all of the love that I'm getting from everyone. So thank you so much. Let's keep it going. After excessive rainfall, we can really see how much of this old rubbish washes out and makes its way into the ocean. Right in this little spot, I can see cobalt blue. I can see some tableware over here. And you can see a huge lift from a bottle. This one here isn't cool at all. I can see it. It's a knife and it's cut off. So we're gonna have to pick this one up and get it out of the water so it doesn't go in the ocean. And then look over here, it's an old paintbrush. I think this one's really old here, so let's check this one out. Oh my goodness. Look at the color on this paintbrush over here. This is extremely old. You can see it's got the wooden handle on it. The metal's all corroded. It's been here for a long time, guys. Well, I'm happy to get this out of the water. I'm not sure if it's a vase, but we're about to find out. We're deep in the water. It's massive. Oh, wow. It's an old piece of crockery. It is definitely not a vase because it has this lip right over here. And it's absolutely massive. Look how thick this bottle bottom is right over here. And look how protruded up it is. So this is probably like a 1920s, I'd say. Now that I look at it, this is the inside, and that's the bottom, but you can see how pronounced it is. I usually don't see this too much with clear glass, so this is probably a really early piece of clear glass. It could even be 1920, 1910. Check this out here, gang. I wasn't sure what it was at first, and I had to pull it out of the, uh, the sediment. You can see it's all covered over here. And this looks like it's the bottom of an old cast iron uh, coat rack, if you will. 
you can see it's got four different legs but this one here looks like it's art deco it looks like it's like 1930s because you can see it's got a unique little pattern and a swirl to it i just found a beautiful piece of red lego and it's right next to this beautiful shell right over here i'm surrounded by so much broken glass and I just found this beautiful piece of cobalt blue sea glass sitting right over here. It's pretty common for where I hunt and where I live, but it's a Carboniferous era fossil. So it's 280 to 330 million years old. And you can see it's got the imprint of the wood from the Carboniferous forest that existed here. I'm almost positive I just found a piece of obsidian, which is volcanic glass. There's actually a negative tide today, so the tide has gone down over four feet since I was here at 11 o'clock this morning and I was finding those bottles. And you can see, I can see that there's pebbles all around me after the storm. So I'm going to check this beach as quick as I can and we're going to see if we find something. Five o'clock, you know, right about now is a good time to be out beachcombing because the shadows are very long. And that means that if there is any sea glass, it's going to be very easy to spot it because the sun is gonna catch it, kind of like this piece right over here. So I don't really have to do much focusing. If there's anything beautiful or even large enough to spot on the beach, I should just be able to see it with the naked eye without even digging. Here we go, there's a nice little nug right over here. It's just aged to perfection. And then I look down and look at this guy's right over here. It's a piece of purple. Here, I'll just get it in the camera first. You can see there's a piece of purple sitting right here. Nice and soft, just a beautiful little hue to it. Oh, I see a little cobalt blue that I missed walking the other way. Check this out, everybody. That piece of cobalt that I just saw is actually shaped like a tiny little heart. And you can see it's not a machine-made heart. This is actually natural old sea glass. Normally, guys, if I didn't have the doggies with me and it wasn't so late in the day, I would set this camera down right here and I would dig this pile until the sun set. But unfortunately for me, the dogs aren't going to let me do that. So we're going to have to give it some quick kicks over here. And hopefully I'm going to discover something that's pretty cool in a very short period of time. Like this right over here. Oh no. At first I thought it was a marble, but it's actually just a piece of jadeite. Jadeite's like a form of milk glass. It was very popular in the 1940s. a nice little piece right over here well you can see right over here it's got this little mark this little crizzling mark and that tells us that this is an older piece of glass because typically we're not going to see marks like stress marks like this this little crizzling on glass that's more modern okay i can see something over here guys it looks like it's like a cup handle it doesn't look too old well now that i'm holding it it's got a little bit of porousness to it and Trixie's come to see what we got. And then look down, guys, right over here, there's a marble, and it's just sitting right here in between the rocks. Check this one out. Ooh. <laughs> it's a little cat's eye. You can see how frosty it is. I'd have to say this one is about six millimeters, maybe five millimeters. It's extremely small. And I'm really happy that I saw this piece over here and then I came to give it a look because it led me straight to this one. I'm just at the high tide mark where all the flotsam sits. And you can see there's a little bit of metal and right over here there's a spoon now it's uh it's a 20th century spoon i don't think it's too old but i just think it's so remarkable how we can take something that's made by us and the ocean can turn into something absolutely so different and beautiful you can see how pitted it is i absolutely love collecting these old spoons now check this one out here guys it's another large nugget and it's sitting right near the high tide mark this one is lavender it's got that manganese tinge to it it's getting a little late and the doggies aren't going to let me stay i'm really glad that i was able to get to the beach and do a little bit of hunting make a few finds in a little bit of time that we were here and hopefully after the next storm cycle there's going to be lots more great treasures okay guys it's a few days later and i'm back it's been raining excessively so a little bit more has eroded out. I'm really interested in this bottle right over here. It's too bad you can see this one. Probably the other half is sitting still in there. So I'm going to be very careful right here, right now, not to get cut, even though I've had my tetanus shot. And we're going to see if this bottle right here is intact. And I have to say, it looks intact. I can almost see a handle here too. So let's get this rock out. 
that's a nice piece of iron. Okay, I think this bottle is gonna be intact, guys. But we gotta be really careful not to break it, which is kind of rough to do. And then I wanna see this milk glass right over here. As you can see, there's a piece of milk glass sticking up right over here. Sorry guys, it's really hard to see. And it's really dirty here. So I'm gonna have to get here we go. Can I get it? I can get it. Here we go, guys. It's intact. I got it, guys. Check it out. Oh my goodness. Look at this. It says W and M. And what's crazy is that's my children are William and Michael. And you can see right over here, it's an applied sloped double collar. So that tells us this is bottle is probably about 130 plus years old. It's got a little bit of a mold marking on the bottom. Okay guys, don't touch that doggy. Don't let it fall. Stay right there. Okay guys, I'm gonna see if I can get this one last thing. However, I looked over here and this one's kind of crazy. You can see there's a piece of sea glass and it's sitting right here. And one thing that I've noticed, look how smooth it is. Look how absolutely smooth it is compared to all of this broken glass. Sometimes this glass is working its way through the mud. It can actually get smooth and aged down and you can find a piece of slurry glass that looks beautiful like this piece of cobalt right here. But without further ado, oh, and then look right over here. Look at this bottle. It's got some writing on it, but we can see it's broken, which is too bad. Okay, now I really, really want, okay, I gotta put this piece of cobalt in my pocket. It's gonna get me dirty, but I don't care. Okay, guys, so the next step, other than look at this handle right over here, this beautiful handle, is I want to get this milk glass and see what it looks like. Oh my gosh, I think it's gonna be intact. Guys, I think it's gonna be intact right here and it is intact. Oh my gosh, so there's a honey hole. Right here, I've got a bottle concentration and look at this, it's a milk glass bottle. It's 95% filled. So it's about 95% complete. It's got some iron on it, so we're gonna have to clean that off. We're gonna put it right here. But I wanna check here now. I think I see one more that might be intact. No. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, guys, it's an inkwell. Holy cow. It's an ink bottle. Oh my goodness, guys. Is it broken? I don't think this one's broken. So we know that the pen kind of came into play around 1930. So this one here is at least 90 years old. And I just found a third one. I don't even have a backpack. You can see Piggy's here. She's just waiting for me patiently. So there's obviously a honey hole going on, guys. I'm obviously at a point where there's a high concentration of bottles and now I've got these three beauties that are coming home with me. It's supposed to rain a lot in the next little while, so we're gonna have to keep visiting this spot to see if more bottles wash out, but this is really a high concentration right over here. This is pretty amazing what we just recovered in a very short time. Okay, everybody, I'm hanging out in my sanctuary by the sea and I've cleaned off these bottles. My hands are just icy cold from all that water that's coming off of the brook. It's just below zero right now. So I'm gonna start with this one over here. You know, I've, I've recovered pieces like this before in the past from a company called Woodbury with some neat patterns on it, but we can see it's a cold cream. So we'd probably assume it's about 1920 to 1940. I'm not sure if I like this one more or this big bottle right over here, but we can see this inkwell. And at first I thought it was clear, but now that I look at it, it actually has an aqua tinge to it. My absolute favorite part to it is you can see that it was made in a mold because the mold line comes up and then it ends right at the top over here and the lip has been tooled by hand. It's finished off by hand. You can actually see there's a little bit of a wavy pattern, a swirl right over here. It's got a few air bubbles. So I'm gonna say that this piece here is probably about 110 years old. It was probably made around 1910. It might even be a little earlier. It might be about 1900. First I saw the W and M, but it was way too muddy. So I really had to clean it off. This bottle you can see on the bottom over here, it has that inconsistent pour and it's got a little bit of a pronounced bottom. So we probably could put this bottle at maybe being about 1890 to 1900. I love the fact that it's got the tapered lip over here and you can see there's all this molten glass that was dripping down as the bottle was being made because this was tooled by hand. I can tell this crack over here is actually original from the bottle way back then. And it's not something that happened after the bottle was discarded. Then after I cleaned it off, I was able to turn it around. And first I saw the word Glasgow, but then I saw white and McKay. 
And you can also see how the mold line really stops and it's got these little twists over here, these stretch marks that we really would expect to see from a bottle that was tooled by hand and finished off by hand. So for me, there's a good chance this bottle was probably made around 1880 to about 1890. And I am absolutely in love with it. I'm pretty sure that I'm gonna be able to clean a lot more of this iron off when I go home. However, I just wanted to share with everybody as soon as I knew what they were, you know, finding bottles during the spring thaw is an absolute real deal. This is the sixth bottle I found in a couple of weeks, and I know that there's going to be more washing out. Just seeing that high concentration over there gets me really excited. Well, everybody, you can see right behind me, it's a really foggy day. Now the video is going to be over. So thanks so much, everybody, for watching and your love and your positive support. You know, I never know if I'm going to be finding beautiful sea glass or if I'm going to be finding old antique bottles or I don't even know, I could find the Ark of the Covenant out here. All I know is every day is a great day to go out and do some exploring, some adventure, stay active, and keep our minds busy. So thanks so much, everybody. I'll see you again real soon.